Spotykamy się w gronie bardzo kameralnym, niewielkim. No niech stracą, niech, niech żałują ci, którzy, których tutaj nie ma. Gościmy bowiem pana Toma Diteja z Muzeum Legii Honorowej w Paryżu, który przedstawi nam dzisiaj wykład pod tytułem Insygnia i dekoracje jako lustra historii na przykładzie hrabiego Walewskiego i marszałka Fosza, ale także Charlesa de Gaulle'a. Um, wykład towarzyszy wystawie Orderowej Blas Orderów. Tu Państwa zapraszać nie muszę, bo Państwo na wystawie z tego co widzę już byliście. Um, no cóż, no, nie, nie pozostaje mi nic innego jak zaprosić Pana do, do przedstawienia nam historii tych orderów na przykładzie tych trzech wyjątkowych osób. Dziękuję. Uh, thank you. Uh, so yes, like you say, it's going to be a very private presentation, but that is quite nice because it's going to be more like a, a discussion. Uh, first of all, I would like to to thank you uh, all of you. To thank you, uh, I won't tell that good, but uh, Mr. Kolmasiak. I don't know if the pronunciation is nice. Uh, and Mr. Pienkos for welcoming me and for giving me the possibilities to, to, to make this presentation. Yes, I have discovered the exhibition. And as an introduction to, to this conference, I would like to say that, uh, and we can see that today, tonight, uh, to speak about medals, about decoration, about insignia. And that's what I'm saying when I'm making two of my own museum. Uh, it's not. To, it's a very specific subject. It's a very. It sometimes it appears like a very complicated subject or a very uh, side subject from the big history. And I think people that think of this are wrong because finally all these objects you can see in the exhibition. All these objects I'm going to talk about it uh, about tonight uh, are telling you are telling us histories. And I really like the metaphor of mirror and if I well understand the title of the exhibition it's mirror because I think decoration are mirror. They are mirror that reflects three different histories and that's what is interesting and that's what we are going to discover tonight. Uh, when you study a decoration it first gives you the history of the time, of the country, sorry, of the country. Why? do a country like Poland, like France, like, uh, I don't know, every country, create a decoration. On which goal? Second one, the story of the character. Uh, when a medal is given, it's to someone, it's for a reason, and this reason for heroic act, for political act, diplomatic, is most of the time very interesting too. And to finish, it's in a context where you can see in the exhibition, you have war, insurrection, uh, diplomatic exchange. All these contexts are very interesting. And so when you are studying a medal, you are stu studying a symbol of all these stories. And I think that's why, for me, it's very interesting to study them. Um, to begin my introduction, yes, uh, I'm from France. And I think it's very interesting for me to have a French, a Polish-French look on Insignia. Uh, and I will make a very brief introduction before to talk about Walewski, Foch, and De Gaulle. Uh, as you can see here is the symbol of King Henry III. And I should begin to apologize for you having had Henry III of France as a Polish king, because he was not very good king. Uh, but Henry III of France was a king of France and of Poland, and you can see it today till when you see, when, when you visit France, when you visit my museum in France, when I have students, they ask me, why do Henri III has three crowns? And I can answer them, there is one for France, but there, will, there is one for Poland, and the third one, it, it was his motto, the third one is waiting me uh, on even. Uh, so today, you can still see, yes, but, <laughs> yes, because I'm this way. Uh, you can still see that on the French, on the coat of arm of Henri III, there is still the coat of arm of Poland. And so French and Polish history has been very linked uh, since the beginning of the story. Uh, and 
the, the order you've got today in Poland, the order of the White Eagle, was very inspired uh, by a French order that was the order of the Holy Spirit. And you can see the creation of this order here, and so still a link from France and Poland. And I think that's quite interesting to start and to finish. You have also a very uh, strong link that was uh, Stanislaw Szczesinski, that was King of Poland, and that was uh, father-in-law of Louis XV, uh, and that created like uh, a desire for France to help every time they could the Kingdom of Poland. As it is. Uh, so, yes, I think to have a French look on Poland history through decoration will be, I hope, quite interesting. Uh, so let's start with our first example of uh, Polish-French prince, uh, Alexand prince uh, Count, sorry, Alexandre uh, Florian Joseph Kolona Walewski. Uh, why to study Walewski? Uh, you have had the very good idea to ask for us to, for the exhibition, the decoration of the Count Walewski. And I think it's a quite good idea because they had never been studied before today. Uh, and we can discover that they tell you the, the, very, the story that is very interesting of this 19th century, where all the decorations are created. And when all the country discovers they have decoration and they are going to exchange, give them to many foreigners, and uh, most of them, Alexander Walewski started as a Polish prince, uh, really, and he wanted to act in Poland, but at, as it was not possible, uh, he will be a great French diplomat. Uh, so, let's start. Uh, Alexander Walewski was the son of Napoleon I and Countess Marie Walewska. Uh, he only saw his father twice. Uh, in Elba Island and just, bef just after Waterloo. So it was not very close to Napoleon. But uh, it, was new. It, it was known that Walewski was the son, Alexander Walewski was the son of Napoleon. So uh, guess how, uh, when he came back to Poland to, to be educated, to grow up, simply, uh, guess how the Russian uh, um, Tsar and the Russian police react when they knew they had the son of Napoleon uh, in Poland. Of course, they were not that happy. Uh, they were very, um, they, controlled, they tried to control him. Uh, and so when he was only 14 uh, in 1824, uh, the, the, the Russians say, what are we going to do with this man that everybody thinks is Napoleon's son and he will want to take power as his father? Um, the, the, the Russians uh, think, yes, we will try to unroll it in the army. So they tried to make it uh, a general in the Russian army. He refused. They tried to uh, let it in a house that was controlled by police. He flew. And so he go where to France, of course, his adoption country. Uh, at first, you did not do many things, but it was very close with the future king of uh, the French, Louis Philippe. So when Louis Philippe came to the throne, he sent him back to Poland to be close to the leader of the November insurrection. Uh, and for that, he was rewarded. And the first decoration he, rece he received uh, was the golden cross of the, the order of the Virtuti military. And it is quite interesting because the Virtuti military will be the only military decoration he will received in all his career, and kind of the only military, uh, the only merit decoration he will receive in all his uh, life. Um, unfortunately, as you know, uh, the, it, it is not, I'm very sorry, his own virtuti military because it has been lost. Uh, we don't know where it is today. Actually, Walewski's decoration was sold uh, in the middle of the 20th century. So our museum has about one part. Another part has stayed in the family, and the third part, if you find them, <laughs> you can tell us where it is. Uh, so uh, the, it is very interesting to see that th this prince was not welcome in Poland. Uh, he flew, and coming back in Poland is the first decoration he received was the Polish Virtuti military that is still today one of the most important military order in the world. Uh, well, 
because of the fail of this insurrection, he go he go come back to France uh, and started a career as a diplomat. And it's interesting to see that first it was not a very important diplomat. And how can we saw that? We can saw that because the first declaration you received were not very important. You can see in the exhibition uh, the order of San Joseph of Toscany. He received when he was ambassador in Toscany in, in Florence. And the order of San January he received when he was in Napoli uh, in uh, ambassador for the two Sicil uh, kingdom. Two Sicilia kingdom, sorry. Uh, what we can see is that if this order were important in the 18th century, uh, they are not important anymore. The order of Saint Joseph, sorry, of Tuscany is the second rank, uh, high rank in uh, Tuscany. The most important is the order of Saint Stephanus. And that's the same for, oh, sorry, for the order of Saint January. That is only second. The most important order is the order of Saint Ferdinand. So what can this decoration tell us? First of all, they are very good quality. He had a very good taste because every time he had decoration, he ordered them to good jewelers. But that's not the point. The point is that uh, he received only second rank decoration because it was not very important. This will change with uh, the, his embassy in Great Britain. First, he was uh, nominated in Spain, but Spain was boring for him. Nothing was happening. Uh, whereas uh, a new uh, political regime was in place in France, the Second Empire. So a new leader was in France, Napoleon III, the nephew of Napoleon. So it was his family, and he really wanted to be close. So he wanted to play a part, a big part. So he asked a real, real challenge, and this was Great Britain. Was Great Britain was a real challenge because uh, when Queen Victoria knew that a new Napoleon won on the, on the throne of France, she thought, oh, we had to go, we will have to go to war again. A new Napoleon, that means a new Waterloo. Uh, it will be a uh, very difficult period. But then Walewski made all he could to make the two king the Empire of France and the Kingdom of Great Britain very closed. Uh, actually, all started with a dance at the embassy with Queen Victoria, where he talked about how oh, Napoleon III was nice, was, very, was different from his uncle, etc., etc. And finally, at the end of his embassy in 1855, he uh, succeeded to make an alliance between Great Britain and Napoleon III. Uh, to reward him, Napoleon III made him, I don't have the insignia here, I'm very sorry, made him great officer of the Legion of Honor of France. So uh, you can see it is still not the biggest decoration he can receive because it would be Grand Cross of the Legion of Honor, but he is becoming more and more important. And finally, uh, the apotheos for him, the most important part of his life is when he, will, he is becoming Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, being a Ministry of Foreign Af uh, Affairs is like a reward for, from Napoleon III to, will, to thank him for what he did in Great Britain. Uh, when he arrived, uh, Walewski will discover, will discover when he arrived uh, at the Ministry, at the Quai d'Orsay, as we called it in France, uh, he discovered that it is not an easy job. Why? Because Napoleon III want to control everything, want to do everything by himself. So he won't be that close with Napoleon III because he, can, he is like a prisoner that just have to obey. But as ministry, he will receive many, many decorations. Uh, and the world uh, be, being more, um, his post was, be, was more important, so he received more important decorations. You can see here, uh, Turkish decoration, it will be first class of the order of the Medici, because of France at that time was at war with Turkish again Russia for the Crimean War, and it will receive the um, Grand Cross of the order of Leopold of uh, Belgium, that is only a reward for diplomacy because he did nothing for Belgium. So you can see two things that is telling us this decoration. Uh, is more important, so, so he receives more important decoration. But compared to virtuti military, virtuti military was for merit, 
he received recreation because he deserved it. Here, it is not for that. It is because he is uh, uh, important, is a ministry, so it is only diplomatic. But uh, the most important things he will have to do will to make peace with Russia during the Crimean War. That will be the Congress of Paris. You can see Valevsky in the middle with all the uh, crowned head of Europe at that time, uh, Europe and Turkey uh, at that time, and is really, really important part was to be president of the Congress of Paris. And for that, he will receive many decorations. Valevsky will, will receive around 15, 15, 16 orders. 80% of this decoration will be between 1855 and 1857. So it will be all for what he did for the Congress of, of Paris and for the peace. And this, and now, the decoration has, are very important. He is the one that counts. He is the one that will make peace, and he is the one that will make Prussia be present at the table. And you know, at that time, Prussia wanted to exist, wanted to show they are the one, uh, they are the country that counts to unify Germany. And so, uh, Walewski wanted to, to be pacific with them, so he invites them. And so, you can see, he received the most, no, it is not second rank order, it is not, it is the most important order of Prussia, it is the order of the Black Eagle, he received, and he received it at the same time as Napoleon III. So now, he received really important things. You can see this decoration in the exhibition, and actually, among the pieces, you can see this is maybe the most important, and this is really the one, only uh, 10, French people received the Black Eagle at that time. So it is very, very rare and very important. And the quality is very, very fine, uh, quite rare. Un unfortunately, it was broken. We don't know when. And to reward him, the, the apotheos, the, uh, Napoleon III gave him, finally, the Grand Cross of the Legion of Honor uh, to, to tell him that, yes, he was the important minister. That will continue with many orders. I cannot show pictures because I don't know where they are. But also, when he arrived at the minister, he was the enemy of Russia because he was at war. France was at war against Russia, and to so uh, to show sorry to show the friendship of Russia, the new friendship of Russia and France after the Congress of Paris, uh, Valevsky received the order of Saint, Andrew, Saint Andrews. That was the most important order of Russia at the time. Uh, he received it quite at the same time as Napoleon III again, and only nine French people have received the order of St. Andrews. So it was very, very important. Uh, unfortunately, he, was, he disagreed with Napoleon III on the Italian question. Napoleon III wanted to participate to the unification of Italy but it was to go against Austria, and Walewski refused. So he was dismissed. He, gave, uh, he was dismissed by Napoleon III, and so then it, his career was finished. He was a member of the private council of Napoleon III, but he was not on the front of the scene. He was not on the back, and so he will only receive, at the end of his life, not important decoration. The last he will receive is Our Lady of Guadalupe, a Mexican order, it's, it was because Napoleon III um, wanted to make a new empire in Mexico, uh, and so he, yes, and so Napoleon III uh, installed a new empire, a Habsburg Empire in Mexico. But every, I'm sorry for that, but everybody, every French at that time received the Mexican order of Our Lady of Guadalupe. The important one was the order of the Mexican Eagle. So you can see. He, he started maybe uh, uh, just a count, an uh, empire count. He became very important with the Congress of Paris and with what he did and received really impressive decoration. And he finished uh, his career as only f uh, interior affairs and with only decoration that were not very important. So you can see with the evolution of the decoration, you can see the evolution of his career. That is very important. And here, Poland was the very start, the very beginning for him. Now the second example we will see is much more impressive and is, uh, he, he will receive impressive recreation because Poland 
was the apotheosis of his career. Uh, Marshal Foch, Ferdinand Foch, at, uh, at the difference of Valesky, at first nobody believed in him. At first, in, no, oh, today in Poland and in France and I think in United States and other countries, everybody thinks Marshal Foch is a hero and we are at the centenary of the First World War and he is very um, put in front of the scene. But at first, nobody believed in him. When we are in 1914, Foch is just a general like others and everybody thinks he won't be very important. But finally, you will see with the declaration he received that he was, he finished very important. With, uh, he will be the only one that has the diplomatic sense to unify British troops, uh, French troops, and American troops on the front. And so he will be the only one to command all those troops uh, in the same times. And for that, he will be the hero of the First World War. He will be the, really, at the end of the First World War, is half a god in France and his United Kingdom. For that, he will be made Marshal of France, Marshal of Great Britain, for Poland, we will see that later. And he will be really, really involved in the war. Of, of course, you know better than me that Poland will be independent after the, the First World War and will be at war against the Bolshevik Russia and Germany. And so, uh, Foch will play a big part defending the interests of Poland in France, saying we need to send troops, we need to send soldiers, and for that, uh, he received from Marshal Pilsuski the Cross of Valor. This is the medal you can see there. And he will receive the fifth class of the military, uh, Virtuti military, sorry. The only problem is that uh, we, we knew this picture. So there is a video. He received it in France when Pilsuski was in France to ask for troops. Uh, but he was, uh, we don't know today, where is the fifth class of the Virtuti military. Then he was made, and you can see Foch here wearing the White Eagle, he was made uh, Knight of the White Eagle in 1922, first 15, sorry, of March 1922. Uh, it is very, very high decoration for this man. Uh, it was the White Eagle number 21. Actually, You can see the number 21 here, and that quite, that's quite impressive, uh, because uh, only 15 French uh, people and only 24 Polish people did receive the Order of the White Eagle during the Second Republic time. So only, no, normally it was only minister and head of states. He was the first um, general, really general, French general, to receive it. Uh, but that's not finished, uh, actually. <laughs> because the most impressive thing is not the right eagle, but the Virtuti military. When he, Foch has come to Poland uh, in, 19, in June 1923, uh, he really wanted to visit Poland and he was welcome as a hero. Uh, he received the first class of the order of the mil Virtuti military. This first class was given only six times during the Second Republic. And only, normally, of course, Marshal Pisuski was the first one to receive it. And then only King, uh, only King. Victor Emmanuel of Italy, uh, Ferdinand of Romania, um, Le uh, Albert of Belgium, and Ferdinand of uh, Alexander of Yugoslavia, and Foch. No, no French president, no head of states, but Marshal Foch. And he received, and that is even more impressive, he received the number two. So just after Marshal Piłsudski, he received Virtuti military first class, that would be even very rare, but he received the number two. And when we study it at the Army Museum last year, they told us, oh yes, uh, we have a Polish Decoration. We have two Polish decoration of Foch. We don't know if they are important. And yes, we told them they had really, really big treasure. And I'm very happy that you can exhibit the Order of the White Eagle at your exhibition. To finish, 
to finish on another impressive note for Marshall Foch. I'm sorry. Uh, in France, we have something I've been told, maybe you will tell me it's wrong, that is very unique. We have Foch, Marshall, uh, Marshall Foch, uh, stick of Marshall of Poland. Uh, because Marshal Foch was a unique officer in the First World War to be made three time Marshal, of course French, of course United Kingdom, and then he was made Feld Marshal of Poland, and just when he arrived, when he crossed the frontier, he was made uh, Marshal of Poland. And uh, you can see this, the double F on the agate of the stick, and he was the second one to be made Marshal of Poland, just after, once again, Marshal Pilsuski. And that is also uh, unique. Actually, being made several times Marshal is very unique. It's unique uh, not for, um, sorry, it's not unique for Soviet generals, because Soviet generals were Marshal of all the satellite country. But for all the Marshal, it was unique. The only case that do exist uh, apart from Frosch was Marshal, uh, Marshal Wellington, that was a great uh, um, leader of, at the, of British troops at Waterloo Battle that was made eight, eight times Marshal. It's quite much better than Foch, but for Foch it was extraordinary. And this Marshal of Poland stick is very, very unique, uh, and it is the only one we know today. I think Marshal Pilsuski was one was destroyed during the bombing of the Second World War. It's what I read. It's uh, unfortunate. And then we have seen a one for which Poland was the very beginning, a one for which Poland was the very end, the apotheos of his career. Then let's see the middle, actually. Let's see. I know it was not on the schedule of the conference, but I think it's quite interesting to study, oh, sorry, to study Charles de Gaulle. Uh, why? Because Charles de Gaulle have been three times in Poland, but let's say two times. First one, just after the Second World War, the First World War, as just a captain, a simple officer. And then he have come back in 1967, sorry, as president of the Republic. And uh, the two times mean two different important things, and the declaration he received. Uh, are very, very different, because they tell you a different story. Poland, it's not tell when you read a biography of the Gaulle, when you heard about him in France, you think about the general, the resistance, the call of the 18th of June. But Poland is very, very important for the Gaulle. Why? Because when the Gaulle go to Poland, he is trying to rebuild himself. He is coming back from two years of captivity. The First World War for the Gaulle was end in 1916. He was hurt at the leg at Verdun, and he was captured. So it was finished for him. When he, when he come back from captivity uh, in 1918, at the end, he is not famous, he is not important, because he did actually nothing. He is not part of the of the winners because he was in captivity. So the first thing he really wants to do is to rebuild his military career. He wants to uh, start a new, uh, uh, to have a new beginning, to, uh, to have decoration, to find a place in the hier military hierarchy and to prove his value. And the best occasion is Poland. The first mission of Poland between um, June 1990 and December 1920 was not really an occasion for him because he was a teacher in the suburbs of Varsovie. I don't remember the name of the school, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, he was a new teacher, so no decoration for him, only the occasion to discover that he was very, very good to speak, he was a very good teacher, and he was very good to make speech. Uh, he came back to France, and then the, he was only proposed uh, administrative post. So he said, Let, let's go back to Poland and let's go to the battlefield. And coming back to Poland in January 19, uh, no, December uh, 1920, he was a member of the headquarters of Pilsuski uh, in the army group 
B that became C if I, in, in, no, in the army group B that was the center army group. Um, and then so he, he has seen the battle, he has participated and for that he, have, he has received the uh, order, the fifth class of the order of the Vietnamese military. Then he has received, it was quite important to him and among the decoration he received after the Second World War, the only foreign decoration he is wearing is the Vietnamese military. He also has received the order of Polonia Restituta. You can see his diploma. Uh, unfortunately, his decoration is also lost. We don't know what, uh, it has been lost by the family. Um, and something very, very surprising, he has received the third class of the order of Santa Anna. This is something we have discovered f two months ago. And it's still a mystery because we knew French soldiers and British soldiers that were participate to the war against Bolshevik troops, but in Russia did receive decoration. But what we did not know is that uh, officer, French officers that were in Poland received Russian decoration. Why, why is that so unique? Uh, of course, Bolshevik countries, a Bolshevik revolution has destroyed, I, I stopped to give all the imperial decoration, all the imperial orders. So the order of Santa Anna was not given anymore. But the, the white government, among them General Wrangel, uh, still give the, this reward. And the unique, this is a unique officer that fought in Poland that we know that received this decoration. So to sum up, uh, Poland was very important because it was a new born. It, it say it is a military reborn for me to go to Pol to have come to Poland. He say I have seen what is to have a victory, because he never saw that during First World War. I have seen what is to command troops, and I have seen the importance of, of building Europe. So it is uh, then. It's the second time, let's say, the second time, but the third time he has come to Poland, it was not as a military, it was not as a general, but it was as the, the president of France. And that is quite important too, and quite surprising too, because this is the top of his diplomatic career. Uh, no, uh, Napoleon, not Napoleon, sorry. De Gaulle, <laughs> the mistake is often made. Uh, De Gaulle, uh, decided in 1967 to come to Poland. And it was a very, very big decision because uh, no, no head of state from Occidental countries had come yet to Poland. He was the first one to make the decision. And when he said to, for example, let's say American, I'm going to make a, visit, a state visit in Poland, they told him, oh, you want to get close to uh, um, the Soviet countries? He answered, no. I'm not going to Poland to get close to Soviet countries. I'm going to Poland to get close to Polish government and to get close to Poland. It, uh, De Gaulle was a um, partisan of the independence of the nation, of the autodetermination of them, and so it was a very big political choice to go to this country, to go to your country um, for him. And so he was the only one to go to, for, from Occident to go to Poland. He was very, very good welcome, as you can see here with this, uh, I, I, like, I really like this picture. Uh, it is written, a long life to the French president of France. And for that, of course, he was the only head of state to receive the order of the, the first class, this time, of the order of the Polonia Restituta. And you can see the comparison. He was only a captain, during the battlefield, he received the fifth class, the Knight of Polonia Resistita. Now he is head of state, and he is the only one head of state to accept to come to Poland uh, to s during the Cold War. So he was made the first class of the Polonia Resistita. It seems simple. It is a diplomatic exchange. All the, the members of the Polish government received the Grand Cross of the Legion of Honor. You have to realize that for this exchange of decoration, it is fifth, fifth, five, sorry, fifth, five months of negotiation. 
five months of exchange of letter, who are we going to reward? Are we going to give something to the goal? Etc. Etc. You have at the archive just a box, only for the decision to give him the Polonia Restituta in the French archive. It was kind of a big, big diplomatic decision. And why is it a, di a big diplomatic decision? Because the Polonia Restituta that de Gaulle received was the only um, uh, decoration he did receive from a Soviet, kind of a Soviet country. Uh, so it was a big choice from de Gaulle. I have finished now the presentation. I've been a bit quick, maybe I don't know. The presentation of the three characters uh, I hope uh, it was interesting. So I think what you have seen, we have seen different kind of decoration, Polish decoration, from impressive, uh, the second star of the Valtuti military, the 21th uh, star of the Black Eagle. We have seen for Walewski, impressive decoration. We have seen for the gold that it's funny to see this small captain come back, uh, choose Poland to come back uh, and receive the first class. What I hope you have seen is these mirrors, is you have seen that decoration are not only things you can see uh, on military people, you can see on army museum. F decoration are telling you stories and they are speaking about values. What is merit? What is uh, having a neuric uh, behavior in, f in the battlefield? What is, what mean a diplomatic exchange? This decoration really mean a strong friendship between France and Poland. It was a really strong act for, for France to go to Poland. Uh, so they are full of meaning, full of stories. And that what, uh, that's why I think it's really interesting to, to make studies of this medal. And that's why I think to make an exhibition about Polish decoration for the centenary of the independence of Poland was a very good idea because there is no better way to rediscover history, to rediscover history of the country but also of the important character that made the story than to study their decoration and to study all these symbols that made uh, this history. I thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was that clear? Teraz jest, teraz jest dobrze. Bardzo panu dziękuję za tak ciekawe wystąpienie. Być może nasi goście mają jakieś pytania do, do prelegenta, więc teraz jest właśnie ten czas, żeby do, doprecyzować ten temat, czegoś ciekawego się jeszcze od pana Pan dowiedzieć. Też. Jeśli można, można może nie, tylko pyta, nie tyle pytanie, ile chciałabym powiedzieć, że, znaczy w ogóle podziękować za bardzo piękny wykład a, i powiedzieć, że bardzo mi się podobał tytuł. To właśnie lustro historii. Thank you. Dlatego, że, a poza tym w sumie podejście do samej problematyki orderowej, odznaczeniowej Naprawdę słuchałam Pana z przyjemnością, ponieważ 
to podejście jest tak mi bliskie, że właśnie orderia odznaczenia wydaje się, że taka niszowa w ogóle dziedzina, natomiast opowiada historię, a zarazem jest też his, jest historią, znaczy właśnie zwierciadłem historii, tak jak historia, którą pokazujemy na wystawie naszej, historia polskich orderów i odznaczeń, jest zarazem historią państwa i właściwie to samo można powiedzieć o każdej historii orderów i odznaczeń, która jest zarazem historią państwa, historią o historii, w ogóle i zarazem historią o człowiek, człowieka. Także bardzo dziękuję. Dziękujemy. Czy ktoś ma jeszcze jakieś pytania, uwagi do, do naszego gościa? For this exhibition, I say I want to do something just about the story of Polish order because it would be very, it would be very, quite interesting, but very technical. And I think to, par, to to start from the character is very important. And like you say, you just have to to, to, to watch here. You have on, your, on the chimney you have a decoration. You watch on the palace you have decoration or orders and decoration. You finally in in front in the palace in. They are everywhere. You watch a man, you have medals. So finally, they are kind of symbols that are everywhere. So they have to tell you the story of the character. And, I, and in the classes I'm giving, giving to, the, to the Louvre school, the homework, the only homework they have is I give them a painting with a general a man with decoration. And they have to try to tell me the story of the man through the decoration. And sometimes they are quite Far, uh, they are quite close to the truth and they find the story of the man just with his middle. Thank you. So thank you very much. Ja także bardzo dziękuję za tą prezentację i przepraszam za moje pytanie. No, wynika ono, bo Państwo pewno to wiedzą, że się spóźniłam. Chodzi mi o pierwszą opisywaną postać na koniec prezentacji trafiłam i, i chciałabym, nie wiem, bo również zapytać, czy, czy, czy pan jest historykiem, czy on się specjalizuje właśnie w tego typu tematyce, czy są przygotowania jakieś kolejne tego typu, nie wiem, wykłady, czy też może one zostaną potem spożytkowane, gdzieś opublikowane te materiały, to co widzieliśmy. Dziękuję. Dziękuję. Uh, uh, I have written the text of my lecture, so uh, I don't know if it will be published, but I can, it's in French or in English, so I'm very sorry, but uh, yes, I, I am, I would be delighted to, to publish it and to, to continue this story or to make other lecture, it will be a pleasure. Uh, to speak about Walewski, uh, and to, no, to answer to your question, I am historian, I am deputy curator to uh, the Museum of Legion of Honor, so I am both, in my museum, I have to be both historian and art historian, so I'm both, on both the um, painting. But uh, yes, to speak about Walewski, uh, it has, I have discovered when I started these studies that it, it has never been studied. We knew this decoration, we knew the story because it has been auctioned, uh, in the middle of the 20th century, so it's quite close from, from us. So we studied that, um, and so we we knew it, but we never studied when did you receive it, why, etc., etc. So it's quite new, and I, yes, I want to to continue that and maybe to make something, some paper about it. I would. Ja chciałam bardzo podziękować panu za ten interesujący wykład, szczególnie z tego powodu, że dla Polaków właśnie ordery nadawane przez Napoleona między innymi stanowią również część historii rodzinnych. I to tylko tak woli uzupełnienia, że oczywiście to jest historia państw, historia wojen, ale też historia rodzin. I chciałam tutaj podkreślić, że ten projekt, który teraz w Łazienkach jest realizowany, właśnie opiera się na tym założeniu, że 
pewne pamiątki rodzinne są tylko pretekstem do tego, żeby opowiedzieć szerszą historię rodzin, historię państw. Także to, to co pani kurator mówiła, w, ty, w tym jakby dołączam się do tego głosu. A chciałabym Pana też zapytać, ponieważ do tej pory nie miałam okazji być w tym Muzeum Legii Honorowie. Jakby Pan powiedział parę słów na ten temat, jak ona w ogóle powstała, jak ona się dzieli, jak ją można zwiedzać? To jest pierwsze pytanie. A, przepraszam, że tak się... Tak, a poza tym, przepraszam, że tak się rozgadałam i może, to, i może nie jest Pan przygotowany teraz, ale jeszcze jakby parę słów mógłby Pan powiedzieć o medalu świętej Heleny. Może nie teraz, albo może w innych okolicznościach, jeśli teraz nie jest to ten moment. Ale ja osobiście bym też bardzo chętnie usłyszała troszeczkę o tym medalu świętej Heleny. Dziękuję. Yes, yes, I, yes, I can. Uh, so several questions, so I will try to make several answers. Uh, first of all, uh, my museum, yes, I can tell you a bit more. Uh, so my museum is a museum of Legion of Honor, that is a French first order, and of knighthood order. So it, is, it, it gave birth um, in 1925 because the great chancery of, of the Legion of Honor had many collections as I wanted to make some things. They say, we have to show them. So they show that first during the great exhibition of, 19, of 1889 and 19,000. And so they say, let's make a museum. And many collectors said, if you make a museum, we will give to you our collection. And so just First World War, make a small stop to this project. And just after the First World War, and in as um, in the memory of the First World War. Thank you. Uh, it, uh, it has been opened, so it is quite an old museum. It was opened to tell the story of the, of course, the Legion of an Army, all the, but also all the orders of knighthood in the world. So we have a few, so it is a small museum, I have to be honest, but, um, but a very beautiful one, very subjectively, but a very beautiful one, um, that tells you the story of the old regime, the royal orders, uh, the religious, no, first, of, of the order from the crusade till now. So from the Maltese order till today, and you have a big, big uh, flow about foreign orders from all over the world. I'm sorry to tell that our collection of Polish order is not what it could be. Uh, it is not the best we could have, but we have some nice pieces. Uh, and we would like to borrow to the Army Museum some wonderful pieces. But yes, uh, so this is a museum about all orders, many objects, many paintings to illustrate what I told you, story of countries, of symbols, of mans, and etc. And to be more practical, uh, we would, I would be delighted to welcome you, of course, in my museum. Um, it is open from Wednesday to Sunday, uh, and it is a free museum. So you are more than welcome. To answer to the second question that is a bit more technical, actually, St. Helen Medal is very interesting because, because it is very different from all that I speak today. St. Helen Museum, um, St. Helen Medal, sorry, uh, was created by Napoleon I, uh, be, uh, as an inspiration from the Crimea Medal. Actually, here we have seen merit medal orders, but there is also something very important that was in that was created by the British. It was, and also the Russian, but most of all the British. That was a commemorative medal. When you're part of something, you are part of a war, a campaign. Uh, you received a medal that telling you were there. And uh, many French soldiers went to Crimea to, to fight with British soldiers. And they, uh, they, did, they did receive nothing from France, but they received the Crimea Medal from Britain. 
from the Queen. And Napoleon, when Napoleon III knew that, he said, I have to change that. And the first political act he made, and as an inheritage of his uncle, he created the Medal of St. Helene, that was the first French commemorative medal for all the soldiers that participated to the war of the French Revolution and, and the First Empire. So it was quite a big political act, and in the same time, a symbolic act to show the heritage of the First Empire. I hope I answered your question. Wejdź na pytania. Czy ktoś jeszcze chciałby o coś tutaj naszego pana prelegenta dopytać? Jeśli nie, to bardzo dziękuję jeszcze raz za wykład. Dziękuję za pytania. I nie pozostaje mi nic innego, jak państwa zaprosić na przyszły rok. W przyszłym roku pierwszy wykład, jaki będziemy mieli, to jest 9 stycznia, też o 18. Wykład profesora Krzysztofa Filipowa, który będzie opowiadał o najważniejszych polskich orderach. Zapraszam, a, a tymczasem życzę wesołych świąt, szczęśliwego nowego roku i mam nadzieję, że do zobaczenia po nowym roku. Dziękuję.